to welcome him today, I'm going to ask you to be very, very strong, very supportive, because he needs us just as much as we need him. Yes. And I hope you will show him how much we need him. Sisters and brothers, that God give and to my God. God bless you. Thank you. First, I must say good afternoon to you and try to speak to you in deliberate terms. I've just returned from Africa Friday and I, I uh, excuse me for not pronouncing Africa the way you may do, but then you're a little more articulate than I am. So I only have one way to say Africa, and that's the wrong way. Because I don't care if you spell it with a K or Q, it still isn't proper. The continent of Africa was called by the, Gre the Greeks. As far as I can research, Alkevalan would be Ortega, Hesperia, Amonis, Libya, Ethiopia, those names were all used before the name Africa. So I will say that for everyone using them, he or she must have had his particular reason for using them towards the continent. I can't find a way in which the continent was called by the people before the Christian era except those names that I have mentioned. And in all cases, they're all incorrect. Incorrect because the African people never called the continent a particular name. If you want to say, in the time of the Christian era, or the common era, they called it a particular name, I can go along with you, and then we can use Africa. Since there isn't a particular name before the Christian era or the common era that the indigenous people of Africa has used for their continent, I will continue to use the word Africa. Well, with K, if you want to put an A, I will oblige you. And if you want to put an A, I will do likewise. In either case, you're still wrong. <laughs> now, I wrote a few years ago, about uh, in 1972, I think, uh, or 1982 or, or something like that, I can't recall a particular time, a small book. And the name of the book was the... Um, I, if I can recall correctly, it was Cultural Genocide in the Black and African Studies Curriculum. The book, to me, is today as relevant as it will have been when it was written. We have not turned the corner, whether bad or good, against the writings in that particular book. So that if I had to write a book today on education, I would take the name of, of this book, change the dates, and put it out there. The funny thing, I, I 
can recognize it because it is so current that it will be accepted as a new book. But let me highlight some things about it and, and detail others. That book was written because they in, there in Brooklyn, there was then with Rudy McCoy and a number of people, including Malcolm's uh, wife, uh, Betty, uh, and I said that with uh, a due respect to her, I want to make that sure because a number of people find to criticize uh, Betty in a very disastrous manner. I can't join them because uh, my knowledge of Betty and respect for her goes beyond that point. So I will not join. That doesn't mean that I would disrespect those who find necessary to criticize in the manner in which they do. Uh, Betty has since earned a PhD. I don't know. <laughs> that could be designated quite differently than it really is. For most people, it indicates a bachelor's degree uh, and a master's degree, and as I said before, the PhD, but I can interpret it different to mean a uh, uh, bachelor's degree, you know what that could stand for, <laughs> is, uh, as with, with due respect to all of you, it is bullshit. <laughs> I know I got it, so, and the master's degree is more shit. And the PhD is a lot of shit piled high <laughs> and deep. Now, it, I do have respect for it because it's a degree given by the master. When you have a master, you must respect your master because at least your master must have something over you in order to hold the position. Nevertheless, Although we are the best dressed up slaves you've ever seen, <laughs> we are that. I mean, I, you would detest hearing that you are slaves, but then what are you? By, by virtue of how we submit ourselves and who rules us, we must be slaves. If we want slaves, we will not be ruled by so many white people. And it doesn't matter if they're Jews, Christian, Catholic, atheists, or anything. Let's deal with reality. We are on the plantation. And it is a very comfortable plantation for some of us, and for some of us it isn't. Talk about classes. We can't talk about classism because in reality, whether or not you're a class with a lot of money, or you're in the class with no money, you're still a slave. So, rather you, I don't know how you could boast because a, a car or a, or a better house or a whatever, that you have more than the other person like you, black I mean, uh, you cannot boast of your class. The slave is just like, uh, uh, I think that um, Alex Haley wrote a book, if I am not mistaken by his name, uh, it's called um, Roots or something. I don't know where he had this Roots because I don't know how they can trace the name Haley back to Africa. He said that he had traced his ancestors and a bunch of white folks from Ireland back the west coast of Africa, and I want to know when did they uh, got born in Africa. But Haiti was better than I, I must say that, because I can't trace my people uh, to Staten Island. <laughs> and he was able to trace them there, so I, I pick up my, <laughs> my roots <laughs> back to any way that black people live. But in particular, I will trace them back to Africa, but uh, knowing how silly it sounds for one group of Africans to be telling another group of Africans, I am more African than you. It used to be a time, and I must admit this, one of the errors that Mr. Garvey made. And you know, some people, we speak of Mr. Garvey as if he didn't make errors. He made blunders, major ones. Uh, one of the things was to cause a fight between a black-skinned person who was light 
and a black skin people who are dark because of the voice. Uh, we don't need to ask if the voice was light because uh, we must be poor sight uh, not to know that he was. But one of his remarks in response to the voice insulting him was calling him the voice a crazy mix up almost white. Now, what do you mean by almost white? All of us had somebody in our family been raped. I'm using the word advisably. But I don't care how black you are in here sitting down. You had some white person been messing with your family. I don't care how light you are or how dark you are or how middle color, if you want to call it. You didn't escape. It, it was impossible for you to escape. Man, that's why I said there is no reason that all black people shouldn't like hate all white people. I cannot come to you and say, well, I am dark. How dark is dark? And therefore, and that's a shade, it's not a color. Therefore, I am better than the person who's lighter than me, and that's my mother. And then the, the, my grandmother is lighter than her. And then if I look hard enough, if I could find one, I might fight one much lighter than her. And then I look at another white, fam uh, uh, another white family, black white family, over there, and made, make a comparison. When I am finished, all black people that recognize the fact that they are black, I cannot turn down one of them as my relatives. So we want to be clear because I he I'm hearing today, especially now on the TV again, about the different characters on the TV and how white one is and how black one is and, and all of them are had, may I, excuse me please, as niggers. Let's get it done. That's the way the white man see us and he hires us because he needs us. Only when he needs us is he going to hire us. And then we, fighting him, fight ourselves. When fighting ourselves, we weaken ourselves. And for each person that we fight in this matter of identification, we are less strong. So I said, every black person who identifies himself as a black person and want to live as a black person is a black person. And I'm not going wrong with a torch light looking for light skinned black and black, dark skinned black and uh, all kinds of different blacks like in that kind of thing. Garvey did it and that was a mistake. It was many mistakes that he made and I wish to, for instance, the mistake that only Christians could be members of the organization. You could not be a Muslim and be a member of Garvey's UNIA. Nor could you be... Uh, Ford is a good example. The man that wrote the UNIA's motto that they had, Arthur, uh, Harold Ford, left here and went to Ethiopia. Why he left was that Garvey forced him out of the organization, and the only problem Garvey had with him was that he was Hebrew and refused to give up his Hebrewness. I was once Hebrew, born in it, uh, as my mother and as my father. I give it up. I don't have a use for it. I don't have a use for any one of them. Christianity, Judaism, Islam, they're the same junk. <laughs> All they do is take money from me, either on a Sunday, Jew, uh, uh, Christianity, and a Saturday, Judaism, and a Friday, Islam. That includes Farrakhan. I mean, let's talk, talk uh, I mean, I know a lot of you are going to like me because I hit your man, and uh, <laughs> that's all right. I, I, that, that I don't mind too. I don't mind you not liking me. I'm not here for love. I get a lot of that in the house. Oh. You, can, you can ask Gertrude and why don't get at 
All right. <laughs> now we get ourselves clear. With that understanding, and I, I must say, I wouldn't have been able to write the book before that time because I was confused. I was confused believing that I was Hebrew, and to be Hebrew was something unique because I believe, number one, that the Hebrews had built the pyramids. They are the craziness about it. I had gone to Africa, to Egypt in particular, long before, but I come back, returned, and still saying at that time, the Hebrews built the pyramid. Excuse me, you may not understand me. Jewish slaves built the pyramids. <laughs> and I used to say, too, I did the, thank you very much, cultural genocide in the black and African curriculum. Here's a copy. And this seemed to be, yes, this, uh, I, I'm, I must, no, I'm not going to blame you for this. <laughs> because you know me, ECA Associates. The man who does this is a thief. <laughs> you see, I like to tell people to say, ECA went, got no right. They had a contract to print this book. They printed this book, and the first day they printed it to now, it was five years ago, up to now he has never given me a penny. And he continues to print it. Every dime he collects from this goes to his pocket. So I, that's Cortez Alexander. And he still does it to the day, today. So let us say what it is. Uh, I like to say just what things are about. This man, I, I better leave it alone. Yes, I, I can sue him. I can sue him. I can do a lot of things against him. But I tell you what I have told people and the way that I'm going to continue. I never had much, even when I was a young boy with my father, who was a, an attorney, and my mother, who was a midwife. And uh, my father was working with the Marcus Garvey organization, Al Don Aviso organization, when we came to the West and was living in Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands. And we just had enough to be, we had enough to do a lot of things, but my father's policy of uh, living with the people, he took his money, like I do, and spent it on different causes. So I, even at the United Nations, where I make a fairly good sum of money, I never had enough, and I swore, when I moved from the area of practicing law and decided to come in this area, I decided then, regardless of what happened to me by an African person, male or female, there is no way I would carry either one before a white man to be sent to a white jail. So that is the only reason that keeps him from going to jail and he continues to print it knowing that he would not be sent to jail. Nevertheless, let us start this work as we were saying. I'm going to pass all the things that he's supposed to do that is supposed to be new. But the book is de dedicated to Tari, Ellie, Dor, Seti, Alkeb, Ru, and Natal. Tracy, Elno, Dorothy, Selwyn, Ruth, Naomi, and Ru uh, Ruth and Naomi are my twin daughters. They are about 44 years old. My adult children and their children, my grandchildren, all of whom have Nile Valley names, present the cultural future of Mother Al. Kebulan and I got Africa, away from home in the diaspora in the new world. 
There are a number of listed names here. But what was important to me most of all were the teachers at the time. The white teachers were fighting, listen to this, for black students against black people who allegedly was equally fight, fighting for the same students. The white teachers maintain in Ocean Hill, Brownsville, that they knew more what was beneficial to us than we know about ourselves. And a number of us joined together to struggle against Albert Shankar, who needs to be struggled against still now, and a number of the white teachers, most of whom were Jewish. I want to make it clear Jewish or not, a white man is a white man is a white man is a white man. And the best one of them is in the local cemetery. <laughs> so that when we make friends with our associates, I have white associates. I don't have white friends, but I have white associates, people I work with. So there's no how that your white daughter could be reached to the status where I will feel comfortable lying in a bed with her for any reason at all. Because what she could give me, if possible, I could get a thousand times better in another bed with a black woman. The And I, and if I have not tried one, and I'm 76 now, I don't think I'll be trying one anytime soon. <laughs> I want to make an opportunity. One thing in the book I did was to go to South America and show those South Americans with Van, Van Sotima and others put in their book as supposed to be in part of my family. Let it be clear. If you go to India and you're not dealing with what we generally call Dravidians, you are not dealing with me. I don't care how you look at an Indian, he is not related to me. You see, if I need and looking for friends, I don't need white people. That kind of people. I got enough black people that look like all of that. I could find a white black person in my family. I could find an Indian there. So I don't have to go out to look for some to say it is my people. I feel quite happy with all the black people, all of you here, I feel happy with. And if, uh, if uh, as says, should things go bad and my wife should pass away. This will be the first time I have my custom to that. And that's why I know God, what to call God or what he, uh, he or she, uh, if they take my wife, uh, the next wife, within three months, I'm going to be married. <laughs> yes, I'm going to be married. I'm not going to shack up with her because I respect her. If I meet a black woman, Within three months, I'm going to marry. I'm not going to lie down in her bed and get up in the morning and leave and come back the next day. If she's good enough to go to bed with, she's good enough for me to marry. <laughs> See, now you asked me to do this book, you know. <laughs> and all I'm saying, go along with the book. <laughs> so, uh, see, that's my feelings. That don't have to be yours. And I remember marrying four four times. Uh, I buried all of them except one. And uh, she would have been here, but she has to visit our new great granddaughter. She's only four months old. So that's why she isn't here. But understanding what we were faced with is. A new type of education was demanded 
by the African people in our community there uh, in Brooklyn, Ocean Hills, Brownsville. Nobody at all decided what we were going to have. We were going to have, we said, a system of education which allowed us to have our children educated. A certain money was allocated, but the money was never in our hands. The money was held down at City Hall and around the corner where the Board of Education was. Held by Jews, and then when we need the money, white Jews, because they got black Jews too, we had to appeal each month for X amount of money to be used towards the school children in various districts. That meant that we were not in control. We settled for that. We settled for another thing, busing. I have never seen the bus go from the black neighborhood to any one white neighborhood yet. And it still doesn't. The black, the black bus starts in the, white, in the black neighborhood and goes to the white neighborhood up to today. That is an integration. Integration was if the two the bus pass each other. One to the black neighborhood and one to the white neighborhood. If the integration meant that much. And now you satisfy, you got integration, you don't have a damn thing. You have the black, black, the black, the bus going out of the black neighborhood into the white neighborhood, regardless if the driver is black or white. You have something that proves your inferiority. You go to the white neighborhood and then tell me how much more educated your children are, as if the white school is better. What you have gotten. The same curriculum you had the day before. The curriculum before teaches three religions and primarily two only. Judaism and Christianity. Now it's gradually taken in Islam. But in what three of them, I don't care if now you're going to say, that Jesus Christ turned black. He finally got a black paint brush and paint him. <laughs> like in Poland, the one the Pope goes back to. They said that it was a fire. The candles lit the curtain, the drapes down. The drape put smoke on the statue but the smoke did not touch the white eye, the white fingernails, uh, you know. So that was the artistic smoke. <laughs> it got to be. It particularly didn't touch the toenails and the fingernails and the eyeballs. That had to be a specialized fire and smoke. And all of those things so far was adopted and accepted as good. We had then learned to be acceptable people. We turned from Negroes and niggers and what else, the jigaboos and so forth, and we became African Americans. But we hadn't changed. Look at the statistics. In any one uh, week in the United States, I am not going to take all the, state, the, all the cities in the Union. I will take only Harlem, which even isn't a city, just a part of a city. And any one week, you got uh, more than 100 black people who kill 100 black people. Men, women, and children. Men, the others. Most of it from drugs. I know my oldest son 
is 54 years old. One of the best educated young men there is, and one of the best addict there is. He can tell you the taste of every drug there is. But he's got that education. But he got smart up at Columbia. So smart that now he is an addict. And once in a while, he knows his children. I have to support them. But he's smart. Very smart. You said he went to an integrated school. Columbia University is an integrated school. And he learned drugs at Columbia University. When I wanted to, to go to a black school, which most of you don't want to go to. For instance, let us go down and see what this is speaking about. This here on page three is speaking about a lesson plan which the teachers union was going to make to be taught at school, school children at the time. The topic they said is slavery. This is a lesson plan now. The aim to learn that all races have been slaves at one point or another in history. There ain't no proof of that. And the motivation is tell the class that long ago people were held as slaves in Egypt. They can't make mean people were held as slaves because there is no record of anybody being a slave in ancient Egypt. There is no record of Moses. There is no record of Abraham. There is no record of Joseph ever been in Egypt. There is no record of bricks made of straw and mud. When you go to Egypt, a number of you have been there with me, and I carry right up against it, there are 79 pyramids, and I carry to the largest one in Giza, you can't find one brick, one brick of any material. They're all monstrous stones. Coming from the Mutapa Mountains, a little farther away, and some cut right there. The, tw the last pyramid, the 97th, at Fayum, I've carried some of you. That is the, the pyramid of Amen M. Hat III. The outside facing has been gone, and you saw the mud brick there, but no straw. And he, the last pyramid, was built before Abraham, the first Jew, was born. The first Jew came there with the Hexus in the 14th dynasty. They destroyed the 13th dynasty. And the last pyramid was built in the 12th dynasty. 12 and 14, in my way of seeing figures, is two dynasties apart. And if the first Jew wasn't born yet, when the last pyramid was built, and secondly, there are 44 pyramids in Sudan. And the pyramids in Sudan are built for priests as well as Pharaoh, and in better condition. Did they build those two? There are pyramids in South America. All of them before Abraham was born. If there was an Abraham. That's the irony is that not a single person could document Genesis or Exodus or Numbers. There is no way in the world to document God. Who knows God in here? I ask you, some of you are Christians, some of you are Jews, some of you are Muslim, which one of you know God? You said, I believe, I, I, it's not enough. 
You can't tell me you know. Otherwise, whatever you had today, don't drink it again. <laughs> yes, I just want to show you. If you know God, you got to tell me where God live. Who's God family if you know? Who's God wife? Because God can't be this wife without, without a wife. Look all the children he got. <laughs> and, the, and these uh, is only a little bit. See, don't count me in them. But I mean, you all, you know, if you, if you, if you know God, you, you, you actually got it down. But I don't know God, see. I know my daddy. And seeing how other people were made, first thing is mommy. That's another thing we got to get straight here. See, my first person I got to look to is mama. Daddy was good to the, to the day he died. He's a good brother. I'm not one of them Negroes that they had no father. <laughs> See, I know I had a father. My father did my mama, but good, good. And he, at least what a man was. But mama gave birth to me. See, I, I, got, no, I got no birthday. I'm one of the few people in here don't have a birthday. My mother had a birthday on December the 31st, 1918. My father have never had a birthday, not that I know of. My mama had a number of birthdays. And I kneeled down in front of her and placed my head figuratively on her womb once a year. That was the day of her birth, the day of her birth to me. That was her birth in day, therefore her birthday. Look at that's gone. That was the way in which the teachers union started. They continued to go further in the way of explaining the situation and that was to make me feel happy to be associated with uh, quote unquote Jewish history. At that time they did not believe or at least these white Jews in America could not tolerate that there were such things as black Jews. And so this continue by saying have the children locate Egypt on the map. So there were no doubt they meant in Africa. They located Egypt in Africa. There's the only place you can locate it. And with determination still insisted that Egypt was not in Africa. Proceed and points to emphasize. This is a, what another headline. Tell story of Jews in Egypt. This is not a Jewish story. This is nothing for Jews. This says here, culture genocide in the black and African studies curriculum. Why can't the Jews tell the story of black people without having to connect us with it? We were here when they weren't. Africa has been there and known for at least, at least 10,000 years without dealing with the archaeological finds. Speaking about the time when the African was using the solar calendar, then they refined that to 4100 BC when they was using the, uh, the uh, sun calendar. And still the Jews were not here. The first accounting we have of them is 1675 BC, the 14th dynasty. Reading it, tell the tell story of Jews in Egypt and of the custom of slavery in the ancient world, as described in the background which I had just read before you. Two, relate the sufferings. This this is Jewish. Uh, uh, this is uh, black people. Relate the suffering of the Jews as written in the Bible to the suffering of black people under slavery. I want to ask, why should I be related to somebody else? When no, 
of suffering in America still being active to relate it to I didn't need them to relate related to but nevertheless we keep on discuss the meaning of words Egyptian Israel oppressed and Pharaoh now what does Egyptian Israel oppressed and Pharaoh would have to me even if it was a, a, a enslave, it did enslave them I would have been the enslaver if Egypt the people in Egypt enslaved them the people in Egypt was like me they were when speaking about my being the slave master because it would be no white had gone there yet the first white people you see were the access to come into any part of Africa Egypt in particular and they didn't come there until the third they broke up destroyed the 13th dynasty and start the 14th so there would be no white people Greece is not around Rome is not around and they told me that the first two white countries in the world and they told me that Romulus and Remus started Rome huh? all these lies that all of us in here have been taught and most of us still believe the lies but let's go keep going sing go down Moses go down where tell tell <laughs> class the following legend has it that this song is written about Harriet Tubman the heroic engineer of the underground railroad who led hundreds of slaves she didn't leave slaves she left Africans Africans who were brought, brought here as African African women who were brought where as African African men likewise and they had children and they were put in slavery they were reduced from human beings to the status of slavery for the white men but they themselves still remain Africans all right we have to get that clear so that when people speaking to me uh, when we were slaves I said we have always been Africans reduced to the status of slavery by the white men I was never a slave the white men called me a slave but I am by his designation a slave but my my designation I'm an African the heroic engineer of slaves freedom to Canada the slaves felt that she was God driven now I wonder which, which God that is and they call her Moses if they call her Moses a bunch of jackass and if she accepted the term, she was bigger jackass. I mean, I respect Harriet Tubman. Get me wrong. But if she accepted that title, then she was jack. Today I was watching a, a, a TV of Jesse Owen. I have never said, seen such Uncle Tom in all my life. <laughs> and I don't give a damn who he was. It was Uncle Tom. In. And they were kicking him, and each time they kicked him, the more he was praising the flag and the man who was working for the uh, tax department equally black was trying to get him understand and when he was called and nobody called him he volunteered to go down to speak in Mexico to the black athletes who had raised their hand their fist he went there to speak for every bondage who was a Nazi? See, I mean, we <laughs> it was song the Black Regiment in the Civil War, and since that time it has became uh, a song of the whole world. The whole world don't sing "Go Down, Moses." That's the damnedest lie there is. Only place that sing that is those who be. 
and knowledgeable of it caused by American influence. They didn't used to sing Go Down Moses in Japan. They didn't sing it in India and another place like that. That's a damn lie, but these are teachers. And it gives you from Folk Song USA by Alan Nomax. They couldn't find a black man who would have. Well, well. Now, number five and the last one. Ask. I'm glad at least they're beg begging somebody for something. Why did these lines mean to the slaves? Why can't he say to the Africans? Go down Moses, way down in Egypt land. Tell old Pharaoh, let my people go. I asked the question, who is Moses? Harriet Tubman? Where is Egypt land? The south. Who is Pharaoh? The slave owner. Why not the president of the United States, who at that time was selling slaves? Why can't we put things equal? It's just like saying, I saw a white man and a Negro. One is a man. One is something called a Negro. You know that one is a man. What is the Negro? Is there a little girl, a little boy, a big woman, a big man? What? It's like you saying, uh, like I'm hearing on the subway now, I saw the nigger, man, the nigger threw it over there, and the, and, and the white guy, we, uh, that's the type of conversation our young black men are having on the subway. They cannot distinguish that the two does not apply. You don't have a group of mango, banana, potatoes, and therefore I got potatoes. Let's go. That was enough to start the writing of this book. And I started with it because it was profoundly written and the person that wrote it know. They knew at the time just what they was putting here. They were writing something for the Jews and not for the Negroes. And this was put out by Albert Shanker's union. I challenge it. Slavery. The black people were not the only ones who were slaves. Many different people were slaves long ago. Some were whites. In the United States, there are many of us don't know that they were slaves. In the state of Massachusetts, if a white woman marry a black man and had a child for her, for him, the child was reduced to slavery and the mother. She became, she lost her whiteness. And she was listed on the blacklist. In many states, the South had no segregated laws before the North. The segregated laws in the, started in the North. New York City, you couldn't ride the trains, uh, the streetcars. And they had laws to that effect. Whereas the South couldn't have them because you were working for the master all the time. So blacks became under those laws slavery. The so-called reconstruction period. This book is fantastic. Now let me read. If you got your Bible, take it out. Because I'm going to be reading from the Bible. I am now in Numbers. I'm reading from the ordinances. Chapter 1. And I'm going to read. You see, I'm not young like you, but I can't read with glasses. Now these are the ordinances which you shall set before them. This is your Bible. Your Bible. When you buy a Hebrew slave, he shall serve six weeks. 
felt, you, you shall turn him up, let him go free for nothing. If he comes in single, he go out single. If he comes in married, then the master will take his wife. If he is married, you took him, you took her. If he's going out free, you took, take her. He don't go out with his own wife. If that is rape, what is it? If his master gives him a wife and she bears him sons or daughters, the wife and the children shall be the masters and the man shall go out alone. That isn't what I want. Now, if you get a nigger slave, I use that word respectively, and you should bring in, you should tie, uh, you should tie the black man, uh, you bore his ear with an awl, and he shall serve him for life. When a man sells his daughter as a slave, she shall not go out as male slaves do. If she does not please her master, who has designation of her ears for himself, then he shall let her be sent. He shall have no right to sell her to a foreign people since he is dealt with fairly with her. If he designates her for his son, if he give her to his son. If he takes another wife to himself, he shall not diminish her food, her clothing, her material things, and if he does not do these things, he shall go out for nothing without pay of money. And I could go on. In here, in your Bible, you tell me if you're Jewish, you're Christian, or you're Muslim, how God is fair. Here is it. Moses' law. And it's in your Bible now. Then you got to ask, what kind of God is that? What a kind of God taught me when I was a boy. Left this out and it was there in the Bible. The man knew he's a liar. He's a thief, a prostitute, a barefoot jackass. He read that to me. He never did read this to me. He never did tell me that the Jews were slave masters. I had to wait for years, many years. I had to wait till I came a married man with children. Before I read, someone re said, read your Bible. And then I realized that the slave master was crying about slavery and he was one of the worst slave masters there was. It just like when Abraham was raping women. Abraham raped Hagar. Your Bible said it. Take it out. <laughs> it said that his wife had to get pregnant. And she told him one day, go with the servant girl. And have a child with her. The servant girl was glad to say, Oh God, come go with me. Give me a baby. Or did he force the servant girl to go with him? Did he rape her? He raped her. And she was an African woman. And I was taught by the rabbi to look at that rape as something good. But at the time I wasn't wise enough to understand he was raping her. So I thought it was a, something great. She had his first child, and the first child is said to be the head of the Muslim people. How do they know that? And they weren't here. <laughs> All these kinds of things, the book started out. 
pointing out to the, the people that you had not changed the educational system. Your curriculum was still the same. The same people were going to teach you the same garbage. Only that you were saying is black studies. I maintain at that time that black studies was a negative term. It still is. Nobody teach in America white studies, yellow studies, brown studies. Why should we have black studies? African studies. And if we had been teaching African studies by now, the children would have been saying African and no American behind it. Europeans are Europeans. And that's what I mean. It's become lovers of our masters. It is bad enough that we try to look like our masters. <laughs> I understand it. My wife too. My wife is quick to go to the hairdresser. <laughs> And when she come back, she look half white. <laughs> and I, I said to the good old soul, and she's a good woman. She means, she wins well. Because she she's, she's a Roman Catholic, but of course the Pope out in a minute. Especially when he start to talk against board control. But she had it <laughs> from day one. She was a St. Agnes girl, a St. This, this girl, and all kind of different thing. And between the nuns and the priests and all of them in St. Croix, where she was born, uh, then she joined the, the, and became a nun herself. And uh, she didn't lose all her faculties, but she did lose some in the process. Uh, I had to understand, but I tell Gertrude that she did quit. Uh, uh, and after she quit, uh, I went and talked to her and tell her about marriage I want to marry. We were nice friends uh, when we were child. She was going to the Catholic school and I was going to the public school. And I had uh, talked for her and tell her how I feel about her. And, and we didn't get together. Uh, and she went and put that stuff in the Catholic church. And, and in the, <laughs> put it in the convent and I wait. I got married umpteen times. <laughs> And wait, and waited for it, and I saw, and then I met at 14, 14th from St. Christ Puerto, and then met her in 14th Street, and she didn't have um, that kind of habit. And I, I said, uh, Gertrude, I still want to marry you. And she said, who are you? And I said, you don't remember me? I'm, I'm the man who's going to relieve you of that thing that you've been carrying so long. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, <laughs> she said, who you are? I said, my mother's name is Julia. You remember Julia Johannes? She said, you, you here? She said, you got your bad stuff. I'm married to Jesus, said, but he can't do what I could do. <laughs> and so after a few days, I got, and then her uncle was my best friend. And she had lived with her uncle and uh, he told me, come on up there. And, uh, he had too many uh, virgin women in his house. <laughs> his, his sister was a years, and she was married to a gin bottle. That's all she ever had, a gin, gin, gin. And she wasn't doing nothing. And then he had Gertrude wasn't doing nothing. And almost his wife was doing nothing. <laughs> so he said, take one of them off my hand. Any one of the two. So uh, eventually we got married. and. Uh, Gertrude lost that thing. But um, <laughs> but this was just one of the incidents of a period of time. This, this kind of preparatory work for black studies is no different than when you go down to the section and antipoids. Going back to Zinzantipos boys at that time, uh, the dankness was not discovered yet. Uh, and so we couldn't deal with her. Even her, we would have to change the name from Lucy to Denknesh, because Denknesh is the correct 
give her a name. That's where they found her, and to give her the, the name Lucy were, uh, was, an, uh, 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 was not proper. In the book, you're dealing, quote unquote, with the Falasha Jews. And I must uh, stop here. Falasha is a misnomer that is ugly. But again, since the Europeans used in it now, at first it was given to us, I live under it. I lived my first six years of life being called a Falasha by Ethiopian Christians. I was called a Falasha many a days and had to walk off the one or two sidewalks that they had. A Falasha is a name in translation would mean don't hate me. It would mean stranger, foreigner, untouchable. It was a most horrible word in the Amharic language. The name that we use officially to ourselves was Better Israel, children of the house of Israel. That too was bad, but it was used by every Jew who didn't want to use. And then the Jews themselves call us Palasha. Remember, we are black. We are black Jews. And there are black Jews in India, the Kashim Jews. There are black Jews all over the place. You didn't know it. There were black Jews in the Caribbeans. Their tribe dealing with us and practices Judaism according to the law of Moses. Now this is Palashas, as they were called. In Israel, before the 9,000 was brought there. These are here from the time of the destruction of the second temple. But you had never seen one in the Daily News, the New York Times, the Mirror, dealing with Israel from the time of the Balfour Declaration. And from the time of the so-called independence in 1947. Yet the Falasha had put to the Israeli parliament, uh, I forget the name that's used, as a president I'm going before I finish. And it was rejected at different times. But yet the Hebrew people at home started to use the word falasha and accept the term also. Because you see, when your, lead, when your master got power, you will accept whatever term he placed you under. Today or tomorrow. And this was them returning to Israel before the big war, the latest war with the Arabs. So you, there you see black falashas from Ethiopia. They were known. They were known, not only known, but it had been accepted quietly that the falashas come from the original Jew. And many blacks were bragging about it. I didn't brag about it. Because if the falasha, using the vulgar name, was the first Jew, he was still a bastard like all the Jews, like the white Jews. A bad Muslim, a bad Christian, and a bad Jew are still bad. The religion don't make them good. So if somebody mistreating you under the title of a religion, and he's black, he suddenly don't come good. Like some people are trying to tell me, the Muslim is my uh, ancient African cousin. How it going to be when there was no Islam before 622? No, it's Islam. Nobody used the word Allah before 622 of the Christian era. And we have to be careful of this. People trying to make us accept their validity by telling, them, telling us they're one of you. They were original you. In Africa, we were so. Like Alex Haley tried to say, that we came here, our own name was Kente Conti. <laughs> and we were Jews, we were Jews, 
How we were Muslim and Jews eating pork chop? <laughs> and the boat they were eating pork chop. Yeah. See the the lie caught up with him. And these are the things that we do not want to deal with distinctly. Again in the book, I dealt and wrote of Nefertari and a man by the name of Steve Harvey is going to attack me about Nefertari and to attack me and that wasn't what he wanted to attack he wanted to attack Akhenaten I mean atop the fort because I had outlined you see if you accept Akhenaten and what Akhenaten had taught that there is only one God and Akhenaten was long before Moses. Moses is supposed to be in the 19th dynasty around the time of Tutankhamun. Akhenaten is long before that in the 18th dynasty. You can put the two together. And he taught of a one God by the name of Aten before the Jews came up not with one God a God above other gods. The Jews is God. They said. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. That is not monotheism. It is acceptance of one God above the others. Not one God. The others could be here. But they should not be rated before me. You see it's hard. It is very tragic because our people have not been removed yet from religion. This Western form of religion. They had religion of the whole. You had Yoruba, you had uh, Ingai, you had uh, these are some of the names that are going to sound Unkulunku in South Africa and all these different gods. You don't have one of them hardly practicing. And you will be mad with me because I challenge you Western God. And your Western God just come yesterday. And I am bringing to you gods that we have used. We have used all kinds of different gods in different countries in Africa. Africa you treat it as if it's a, a country. Africa is a continent full of countries with different types of laws and, and behavior. Some of you wouldn't accept, I wouldn't accept, others you would accept. It depends on your own thinking at a particular time. So dealing with this book is a very hard thing. She, he is claiming, he wants to say that Nefertiti was ruler over Akhenaten and it couldn't be. Then in it he is complaining of Akhenaten, his black form is just like you take anybody here, undress them, and say their body, and their lips, and their face, and their nose, is congruent. They're ugly. What it is that make them ugly? Well, they look like you and I. But then you and I are ugly. Even though we went in Miss America's pageantry. But they are not honest about that. When they take a black girl. Like they take a white, a white one from Jamaica. Miss Jamaica is a white girl. Last time this I mean, is a black girl. And you put her up there against a white girl. Stop. Ask yourself, what could she win? In good reasoning, use a white girl, any white girl, and take any black girl. You can't be judging on the same basis. They're two different people and two ethnic groups. One must automatically win because she is there under the 
standards set up by the men who run in and had to lose. So you know it was set up. You know for her to win, somebody had to be lying. Thus when the white woman, the, uh, Will Williams, won it, <laughs> she was prostituting herself uh, quite a long, a, 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 a long place and going with men and women and dog too. <laughs> Black star to complain for what? When I was up, up at Cornell and the students come, Dr. Ben, what are you going to do about it? What are all you black professors? I said, not a damn thing. She said, but aren't you going to? I said, look, I don't going to do a thing. I come here in the, in the um, airplane and that was enough things <laughs> to, to stay in a plane with a white man uh, at the wheel. That's enough. <laughs> But you, you heard what he said about his sister? I said, I would have said the same thing too. <laughs> if she went to bed with a dog, she went to bed with a dog. And if she went with a woman, I wish she did many a times, uh, she went with a woman, she, she, she's no damn good. The students became very angry with me and some didn't speak with me for months until exam time, of course. <laughs> I know they were going to speak. I know they were going to speak with me. <laughs> but then I broke it down to the students. Of what are you going to defend a black person solely because they're black? Then you must go to the jail. And all the black men that rape black women, you must celebrate them. I said we have we have a distinction. We celebrate black people are like us. You must first set a standard. We cannot just celebrate a brother if the brother wants to be in jail and have no repentance to the sister or another brother for what he has done to the sister or brother. He must feel that coming out he owes us black people the right to respect us by leaving us alone. And from there he could walk himself back to the society. We can't respect a black man solely because he's black. He's black running around shooting up black people. How are we going to respect him? We have to make the distinction. And that's why there's so much argument with me is that I make distinction, make qualification. For we are the best. We are the greatest. And you can't mistreat us. And then I accept you solely because you're black. Damn that. You must be black and beautiful. You must be black and have values. You must be black and willing to contribute something to our community. Not just being black alone. Because that I could boil off in a minute. Michael Jackson was black. <laughs> you see, this, this is the thing. I know I'm go, not going to bore you much longer, but I got just a few more things and, and get a chance to question me. But you understand, the analysis that this book, particular book, made, and it, it touched on Adolf Hitler, and I said, there was nothing with Hitler. Listen carefully to what I'm saying. Because I know I'm going to hear it different than I said it. That isn't wrong with each white person you meet out there in the street. They would have done the same thing to us as they would do in the morning, given the same situation. Adolf Hitler was a Christian. A highly honored Christian. He gave the Iron Cross to those who were his favorite. Out of Hitler burned Jews. He burned blacks who was anything. He did to Senegalese.
altered them, has cut off the penis and let them live. But how many whites here who would not do the same thing? Even now, today, this day. So I said, why cause Adolf Hitler? And the statement that he killed 18 million Jews, he killed 18 million people of whom some were Jews. He killed Christians, he killed atheists, he killed faggots, he killed lesbians, and, and all them kind of people. I, 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 and I don't say excuse me for faggots. There's no excuse. He killed faggots. That's what he killed. I read a, a, a Jewish book and it tells me a faggot is a man who acts like a goat, would like a goat and give up sex like a woman. I don't know what it means because any woman that give up sex for her behind, she's in trouble. A faggot has nothing to do with a woman, period. He acts like. But he can never reach the quality of a black woman. So I, I'm very particular with that. Uh, that to, to let the world know, uh, that goes for you brothers, that you don't beat up on the sister. Because uh, the sister is the mother of your children, or at least some men's children. And I wouldn't have liked my father beating on my mother, otherwise I probably ha will have to put a period behind his life. But he didn't beat my mother. I'm, I, think, I thank him for being that generous. Uh, he was o older, and I, I, I go along with that. He was 27 years older than my mother. And uh, she was a pretty, pretty suckling th thing in... <laughs> <laughs> Tried to be a, a, a midwife, and uh, and uh, he, he had lost his first wife, so he really uh, under circumstances. It'll be a long thing to discuss how he and my mother met. She she was running from him backwards, <laughs> and uh, and and he caught her and everything. But anyhow. This is the reflection of the book at that particular time. And I said to you, nothing has changed. I then went to Egypt. I had had enough by then. I had started in 1957 to carry, as early as 1957, to carry people to Egypt, to study, to visit some of the scenes. So I was quite aware that much of what had been taught by my Hebrew teachers was incorrect, to say the least. I had dealt with Enhotep, Akhenaten, uh, Isis, and so forth, using some of the Greek names and so forth, the Sphinx, the uh, uh, other thing. I had dealt with Queen Tai, uh, 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 that's Akhenaten's mother, and so forth. I dealt with, with the Pharaoh taken Amen, these were another thing. During the Roman period, many Africans had become uh, uh, Roman and Greek become part of the the royal family. Uh, again, uh, Greeks had not, and that's why I tell you, be careful. The Greeks had not instituted what we call uh, racial superiority, and we have to be careful in our uses not to give to the ancients, unless you have specific case that you point out, because the first and only time we can start slave um, racial discrimination would be the Arabs in Spain, when they were classifying race horses and human beings. And that's the first back you can put the type of races that we are talking about with shackles and so forth. It must be done on a basis, just like people saying, Cleopatra was a great black Egyptian queen. When? Cleopatra was the worst prostitute there ever been in, 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 in the whole world. A white prostitute 
Who was her father? Her father was a startup from, from Persia. I, I'm sorry, her mother was, uh, was the daughter of the startup from Persia. And her father was Ptolemy the first, who called himself Sutter, a general in Alexander's army. And when Alexander died, he killed the startup, took his daughter, forced her into marriage, and she pro produced a, da a daughter called Cleopatra the first. And every daughter is coming from all the Ptolemies, the, son the sons, were called Cleopatras, and the daughters, I mean the daughters were called Cleopatras, there were eight of them. And the sons were called Ptolemies, there were 15 of them. Cleopatra the seventh, that's the, uh, is the one that you're talking about uh, with Marcus Antonius. Now how the hell are you going to get her black? Persia. Her family is from Persia. She was born in Egypt, but of this parentage. I'm sorry to disappoint you, but hell, <laughs> it got to be told to stop worshiping that whatever you call her. You see what I mean? It is some like some men. They say Ramesses was a great man. Which Ramesses? Which one are you speaking? The 15 Ramesses. Ramesses the first, the Ramesses the 15. Only Ramesses first and second were Ramesses. Ramesses the third was the general, a commander in the army that overthrew the government and took over and then took the name because he liked it, Ramesses the third. But it was no relative to Ramesses the second. And, and it goes on. It goes on even in books. I am reading. They don't specify which Ramesses, which Sesostris, which this, that, that, or the other. They just read one book and decide they could write a book. Like they come to Egypt and we one trip and next trip they bring their own. Because, they, they, because the money goes to them. The money isn't spent in Egypt in any village. Not a village they own. Not a... Some of them can't tell you one person, they know that they write. They go to no place. Whereas, when you go to Egypt, how you can go to Egypt? And with 20 million Nubians, just take out the Egyptian. Just deal with the, the Nubians. You get 20 million. And they don't know one. One company. One, the 49 Nubian villages had to be moved because of the dam and moved 40 miles north. And there's a central village called Dabud where we stop at. And Dabud controlled the other 47 villages. They've never been in any of those villages one time. Not one. All these kinds of things, you see, that's why I said to you, these are black men and black women who are going to Egypt but can't name you a one Nubian just to name you one and say where you live, much less a Nubian village. They don't contribute anything. They bring in from Africa all the time things to sell. And they buy them for 50 cents and 90 cents and sell them here for five dollars, 25 dollars. And this is why I said, is it that what it is by going to Africa? No. You don't get rich going to Africa if you go to Africa collect correctly. And that's why I put the penny to sleep. I deal with all of that in here. I put Africans from Europe and put them in the different status and show them. I deal with Zanzibar boys. I deal with uh, all kinds of fossil. I deal with uh, the Hippocratic Oath, showing that Hippocrates knew, the Greek, Hi Hippocrates knew that they were Africans before him in medicine. He swears that he will practice 
medicine. According to Escalopius, the Greek name for Imhotep, he practiced medicine according to Alheel, another Libyan, Libyan of Lebos, of ancient time. All, of, all this. So then, I realized that it's hot and I'm going to allow you to question me now. But I did this lecture because, again, it's coming to be very important that we understand what the African studies mean now that we are changing it into all kind of culture, this and cultural that. That those African department that remains, like in City College under Dr. Jack Pace, that you understand what they are fighting for. The Puritan and the Puritan and the African Puritan, the uh, European Puritan and mixture, have joined with the African Americans to keep that in the manner which it is. And even a black sister from Jamaica with children for a white Jewish husband. That's what it's like for the new president. She fought it, but she lost. They're going to keep the African studies department. And I hope, the black studies, I hope they change it to African studies and fight for it if necessary. Don't, that it don't happen like uh, down at uh, Philadelphia Temple was changed to complete nigger studies, ne ne <laughs> negro studies department. And only negro. How can you have a black man negro and is accept it? How can you have the negro study before he's black? You must start with the African studies and then at least deal with the negro because that's he had to be an African in his background to become an ego. But in City College, it has been recognized. And Dr. Jeffries did a very good job in documenting what he had to say. It's unfortunate. It's unfortunate. I fought a loss that all the African studies people refused to work unless they kept Dr. Jeffries. But as I said, we're not ready to die for the African. Africans are not ready to die for each other. We are like Colin Powell. We go out and willing to die for our masters. We will do anything for the master. And that's why I say, I commend you brothers and sisters who still find that the sweetest meat this side of your heaven is the black woman. Amen. If you never had one, run outside and get one quick. <laughs> It may be good for your health. <laughs> so I dedicate my lecture to the black woman. Thank you. 
That's right. <laughs> and then they find out from the spies, the rest is history. So it is important that you continue to make sure that you get this kind of information. It's good for our liberation. And Dr. Bennett mentioned about the sisters and brothers in India. At the last lecture in the month, Renovo Rashidi will be here. And his field of expertise is the African presence in India. If you want an experience, make sure you see that presentation. And the beauty of that presentation is it's backed up by a slide show. So if he says that they're in that they're Africans living in India, you don't have to take his word for it. You can document it. So make sure that you are here on the last Sunday. What's it is? you can get some make sure you pick the schedule at the back. It's on September the 29th, and the lecture will be The New Global Dimensions of the African Community. Now, a number of things Dr. Ben said, but Dr. Ben never, as I indicated, he never ever tells you about himself, other than the little personal details, which we won't get into. But when he mentioned the Pharaoh Amen M. Amen M. Hedep, yes. What he did not tell you is that you're looking at that pharaoh right here. <laughs> this is exactly what that pharaoh looked like. So Dr. Ben has indicated he'll do the book. And I think this would be not self-serving, but it would be a glowing tribute to the African presence, the true African presence. Because if you listen to these uh, invaders and these thieves, they'll tell you that the Egyptians were but when you see someone looking like Dr. Ben, young, any question, I think this would be a grown, growing chip tribute to Dr. Ben. And I'm getting in touch, grown, will be the resurrection of, he will be the resurrection of Amen M. Did I get it right? Amen. A M E N dash E M dash H A T. The third. Okay, the third. So, um, when is that book going to publication? Uh, I got to get my typist, uh, type it on that thing. Okay. This one is being readied. Okay, so we look forward to that book. And this would be just one of 30 plus books. Dr. Ben has about maybe a dozen books in his pocket. You never know <laughs> that one in um, the museum, the Cairo Museum. Oh, that's ready. We, we are uh, we are rating on certain monies. <laughs> <laughs> well, certain monies. It's a long time you haven't made a tribute to Dr. Ben. I'm not going to bust you this Sunday. But the next time he comes here, come prepared to make contributions. Because that's the least we can do. That's the least we can do. At one time, Dr. Ben was the only person looking like us that were doing archaeological digs in Egypt. You go into Egypt and you see the Japanese. You see the Chinese. Of course, Europeans crawling all over the land, digging up our ancestors. And Dr. Ben was the only person who was there trying to get information from all points of view. So it's important that you support him and support his work. Uh, well, we just have world to. Religiously. <laughs> and like religion that jam us up, that too. Everybody give a damn who wins. The Republican will set a Democrat as an ambassador and will put, and the, and the Democrat will put the Republican and the Republican will put the, they're all in the same basket. Now, now what, now what, what I'm going to that. Fought against the last president. And he's doing the same thing right now in um, that place over there, Iraq. 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 Mm -hmm. What makes him better than the other one? Nixon, all of them, from Washington down to Clinton, they're the same thing. <laughs> and, and, and I just brought that out. And I hope sometime we can realize that even when we have differences with one another, and stuff like that, even with the groups and organizations, the main goal 
is to get rid of you know who. That's right. And so, and if we can get off the pavement of what somebody did wrong in our organizations, as long as that goes focus on Africa and stuff, right. we can actually win this. Right. And so, that's all. Thank you. All right. uh, sisters and brothers, there's just a little flyer. I'll ask you to take it and just circulate it. I'll just read it briefly for you. Africans wake up. According to the San Jose Mercury, August 18 to 20, 1996, the Central Intelligence Agency of the U.S. government deliberately brought crack cocaine into our neighborhoods. Crack was sold to our young people to raise money to buy guns to overthrow the Sandinista government of Nicaragua. This was U.S. foreign policy. This was warfare against African people. This was the deliberate destruction of our young people, our future neighborhoods. Now we know who are the real drug dealers, the CIA. Now we know who are our leaders. They are silent or absent. Now we know who are our enemies. They have declared war with drugs. Now we know they plan to completely destroy us all, to destroy us all. Isn't it time for us to act in our own self-defense? Remember the Tuskegee experiment? It is your constitutional responsibility. The least you can do is to follow the Constitution by which we are all sworn to live by. Oh, this is from the Constitution. Sorry, the Declaration. But when a long train of abuses and usurpations Pursuing invariably the same object evinces a design to reduce them under absolute despotism. It is their duty, it is their right to, to throw off such, such government and to provide new guards for their future security. That's the Declaration of Independence. No, we have not heard one, one person. The only person that's speaking on this is Maxine Watt. Who? Well, Jesse said. Jesse it was on the internet. It was on the internet. He did speak. I don't have the internet, so he hasn't spoken to me. He spoke to Larry. No, but what I mean, what I mean, I mean, this is talking. You know, when we got up and say so, sometimes people walked out. People never came back to our lectures. They thought we were crazy. The evidence is here now. Okay? So kindly pass this around and see if you can find a black someone in the black. What's his name? Donald Payne? Have you heard boo from him? No. Uh, he's not You're not going to hear nothing. No. 